Hi and welcome to another episode of Hair of FC here on Vanilla FM. And today we're going to take a look at a couple of um, season preparations that I do. And also take a look at the first match. So we are now on the 3rd of August 2024. We're about to play the first match against Torquay in the Van Ramen National League. So we've been promoted and we're going to play our first match in the new league. Now, ahead of the season, around about the 30th of June... I go to um, the staff page and I basically renew all my staff. So the first thing I do in preparation for that is ask for any additional coaches that I think we might need or any other additional staff. And then, because all the contracts run out on the 30th of June, I go to the this panel and I sort um, the view by month to month. So I want to see which staff are out of contract and then I go through the senior team first and then the rest of the teams so just to give you an idea I when I go to the staff search I look for the head of youth development um, I look through the performance analysts um, all of them uh, I look through the scouting team all of them recruitment if if, if um, um, if available, obviously we don't have a recruitment analyst in this team yet. And then I also you look for all my physios and sports scientists, if applicable. I leave the coaches until a later date, and I'll explain why. And I'll also leave any other coaches in any other teams um, until a later date. But what I do do as well on the 30th of June is look for the manager and assistant manager in all teams. Now the reason I do that is because once I have confirmed who's going to be my youth of development and um, managers and assistant managers for the youth teams I can go to my training tab and then for the coaches I'll, I'll renew the ones that are useful but look to change things around to fill any gaps in um, the uh, what do you call it in in the training responsibilities, the coaching responsibilities? Um, so, for example, I'll, I might renew my goalkeeping coaches or fitness coaches if there are any up for renewal. But for example, this guy down here, Jamie Petri, um, I'll wait until last to see what kind of you know um, skills the my new under twenty ones manager might have, or, or any under twenty ones coaches might have, and so on. And then I'll plug that gap. So in this case, I got Jamie Petri a couple of weeks ago. That means that I can um, remove myself from the responsibility of doing a tactical attack. And that might, in some instances, it gives me points elsewhere. In this case, it doesn't. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll take it off anyway. Um, is there any advantage of taking myself off? Probably not. Let's see what else this guy can do. Can he do coaching there? No. Two stars, two stars, three stars. And does it make any difference if I do that? No. Okay. In this case, it didn't make any difference. So I'll leave myself on. Uh, it just means that we share the load, which is quite nice. But in f often the advantage of that is if I have a coach. So for example, here, the fact that I have Ricky doing that. Um it means that I, if I remove myself off it, if I spread the load among the coaches, each coach will get slightly better at what other responsibilities they have. So that is it. So I'm going to do the same for the under 21s. Coaching, uh, no, training coaches. And here, also won't make any difference, so I'll leave it on. Now we have one coach up for renewal in the under 18s, so let's have a look at that. So this guy down here, Mark Seedon, is not on a contract, so I'm going to just start again from scratch. So Rick is going to take over the tactical, the coaches obviously, goalkeeping coaches will take over the goalkeeping coaching. And then I have these two guys, and I think that's the, yeah, that's what they can do. Uh, this guy here, the um, youth of development, they only do under 18s in this version of the game. They used to do all the teams, but now they only do under 18s, which is Mark's 
speciality, so that means we don't really need him anymore. So we're looking to replacing him. And then these two guys do the same. See what else this guy can do. That might be useful. And not much else. What else this guy can do? Oh, he can maybe look after that one. Or that one. Or that one. Okay. So which one am I less good at? All of them. Okay, so we'll see. We'll, I'll leave it like this for now. And we'll go to the coaching app. Um, to the coaching. I'll definitely have to do that one. And then... We'll see what other options we have as far as coaches. Uh, yeah, I think it makes sense actually, looking at this now. Because I'm going to have to take over the technical defending anyway. Because neither of them are very good at that. So I'll take over that one. Which gives you an option of technical attack. Three and a half stars. Four stars. So if I do that. And John does set pieces. Because that doesn't make any difference for him. Then the coach we need to get is a technical attack for the under 18s. Okay, so let's go to our staff search. I'm going to look for a coach in, interested in youth team roles. And we're going to pick, uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it as attack for now. I'm going to lower this and then we're going to look at someone who is technically minded hopefully and we have this guy here martin socket so we're going to approach him and reduce the offer and there we go so he's going to come and replace mark now the one that i leave the one um role that i leave until the very end is the role of director of football and I use the director of football in a way that is not very conventional, I think. So this is a, this is a trick that I've been using for a few years. And I think it's worth sharing because it's something that I'm... I don't know if anyone else does, but I've, I've decided to do this. So if we go back to our view like this, I always play with the director of football. Well, 90% um, well, of the time I play with the director of football. And the reason for that is I need someone who can... Uh, I need a different view. This one. Um, and then we're going to go to auto size. I need someone who's going to be able to help me do a few things that I've, I delegate. So I don't like looking after any team talks or um, press conferences. Um, what else? Like, yeah, a bunch of stuff. So I need my director of football. To do all the interviews on my behalf and also some sort of technical um tactical decisions as well within the match with the um uh, opposition tactics and so on so at the moment actually because we got chris as a new uh new uh, head of youth development i tend to use chris even in the previous versions of the game i don't know who chris is in real life but chris if you're watching this I use you all the time for my head of youth development. Um, looks like he's in Britain Ferry. Britain Ferry is in Wales. That's amazing. All right, Chris, if you're looking, I might tag you in the um, in the uh, in, um, in the YouTube video. Use you all the time. You're an amazing head of youth development. So. That is my testament to you. I have no idea who you are in real life, but yeah, you're great. I use you all the time. So, anyways, we are going to try and get a um, director of football that can maybe do team talks better than Chris. And as far as technical knowledge, uh, let me just go back to responsibility so I can remind myself of what I need. Uh, team talks. Uh, Touchline shouts. What else do I need? Opposition instructions. Okay. So yeah, so only coaches, the youth development lead, and the director of football can do this. Okay. So, go back. So at the moment, 
Jamie is the best person for that. And he's a nine. I can't even see who the director of football is anymore. Oh, eight. Okay. So our current director of football isn't very good compared to the new staff that we brought in this season. So we need to have a director of football that has 10 or more technical knowledge and 12 or, uh, sorry, 13 or more motivation. Motivating. Uh, so we're going to bring those both of those up. Technical knowledge. Ten or more. Uh, we might not be able to get oh, this guy, but this guy is tied into a contract, so we don't, we can't do it. I think I would like to get because we got Chris for the tech, for the team talks. He's twelve. And we could potentially get this guy, Lewis, for everything else. Okay, let's see what kind of approach we could take with him. Actually, if I... No, okay. Approach. So we're going to make him a director of football, reduce the offer a bit, and he's signing up. Fantastic. So now Lewis will we'll split the responsibilities. Lewis will take over the tactical stuff, and uh, Chris will take over the team talky stuff and the interviews and so on and that is it now now I need to show you what squad we have so I haven't finished the transfers there are some gaps to fill and you can see on the left hand side of the screen the current list of players that I have and the contract and you see there's a massive gap in far as, as far as strikers so I haven't actually um, gotten any strikers for the squ for the squad yet. I'm re reusing Jason Cowley, which I didn't use last season. So he is going to just be our resident striker for now, um, temporarily. And I'm using some of the youth players to fill in as subs for Jason. Now the rest of the team, so we have Russ Griffiths. He stuck around. He was doing some mentoring the second half of the last season, so he didn't really play the second half of the last season. But I kept him for this season. And also, we still have Tyler, so he's probably going to be our main goal goalkeeper. But I'm going to give Russ a couple of matches just to kind of, you know, make sure he's happy. Um, then, in the right side of the fence, we have one new player, Kieran. He's joined us uh, from Scarborough. Oh, did he join us last season? Wait, hang on. Maybe he has. Anyway, so Kieran is with us, and we still have Jay Rowe, uh, who came uh, last season from Boston. Uh, in the left side of the fence, we still have Lemon, Mackenzie Lemon, who joined us last season from a uh, Scottish team that I can't pronounce, Cow Cowdenbeath. I think that's how you say it. And we have one new player, Dan Davis, on loan, a uh, 19 year old Welsh player from Wrexham. Uh, in the defense, I've we have largely the same central defense, but I've switched some roles around a little bit. So we still have Daniel Devine as our wide center back, who joined us last year from a club in Ireland, the Wanderers. And for that role, we used to have Neil Cooney, but now I've actually put Nathan as the other player in that role. Uh, it kind of just works out better for Coney to work as a central defender. So Nathan um, doesn't mind which one he plays, really. So we're going to do that. Uh, and as I said, in the um, central defender role, we have Scott still from last season. Um, came, joined us a lot later half of last season and Neil Cooney as well. So they are the central defenders, um, which actually play, I think, on the left side of central defense. And then in the middle central defense, we have a non-nonsense center back, two of them. So Jamie Bullock is the main guy. He joined us from Iberian. Uh, he's one of the new recruits for this, the uh, central defending pool of players. 19 year old, lots of potential. And the other player for that, also new to the squad, is Jamie Jake Grant. 18-year-old on loan, 
lots and lots of potential great physicals for this level uh, is on loan to us from Crystal Palace so that is great uh, in the defensive midfield we still have the two from last season Jonathan Page from Farnborough and also from last season we got um, where is he now Ryan ah Ryan Hansen so he joined us the second half of last season for the defensive role position from Turkey. So he's going to be... Well, he's actually not in the in the squad for Turkey, but he's going to be facing Turkey at some point this season. I'm sure he'll play for the second match against Turkey. That is, if he doesn't accept um, a contract to leave. I've made a counter-offer, so hopefully he'll stay. We have two brand new midfielders. So Luke Wilson, one of them, is an Irish player. Join us from Portadown. And then Quinn, uh, where is Quinn? Stephen Quinn, uh, he is an Irish player, quite mature Irish player with some great mental uh, attributes. Uh, he came from Mansfield, so he's playing a league down from his usual in the last few years, so he should be quite good. Uh, a little bit of a shuffle in the right attack, the right midfield attack. Jermaine Francis was playing as a lefty last season, but this season I put him on the right, so hopefully he will do well for us. And we still have Romeo. Romeo, 25 years old, joined us last season from St. Albans. First time in this league. And then on the left side we have two new players. We have Kian Lee Fondre. He's a 19 year old. Uh, and he joined us from Burnley on a free transfer. And then we also have on loan Favour. And Favour is a Nigerian player with some potential from Sheffield Wednesday. So that is fine. And then as I said in attack we don't really have anyone. So at the moment we just have the original uh, striker Jason Cowley who joined Hereford. In real life I think. I don't think I bought this guy. Uh, let me just double check that. I think he's still a real life Hereford player. So if I go to history last season and Jason Cowley, where is he? Yeah, I think I think he's an original from Hereford. I, I didn't did not get him myself. Okay, so that is it. So we have to finish up. Um, the, the, the striking uh, situation but for now we don't have the cash to invest so we're just gonna go and uh, play a match now let me know in the comments how your save is going which pick which team you have picked um, how it's going what kind of issues you're having what kind of tips you might have as well I know there's been some rivalry in the comments between Gloucester and Hereford's I hope it continues like that. I mean, I mean for Hereford, I mean, they're doing really well this year in real life. So, I always pick Hereford. Uh, I've been asked this. I always pick Hereford because I used to live there. So it's just a team that I've always played because I thought it was fun playing a team of the town that I lived in. City, um, apologies, city that I lived in. Um, and yeah, so, Basically, as because I've played every single version of Football Manager, it's nice to see the progress of the game, having the constant of playing the same team every time, and you, you basically just see how the game progresses a little bit better. But what I might do in the future is do like one-off uh, trying different teams. Um, back in the old days. Of football manager and all I think there's like a basically a previous a previous brand of air like championship manager um, and other football managing clubs I think the very first football managing game I don't remember the name of the game anymore but the very first one I used to play Man United because there was there was only one option the only option was to play Premiership League teams and I can't remember the name of the game now but yeah, so Man United used to be my one. So for two years back in the day, back in the mid 90s, sometime, 
that used to be the teams that I picked. And then when Championship Manager came out, I used to play Porto, FC Porto. Um, and, and that was good. I really enjoyed that. And there was another game. Oh. Anyway, there was also another game. Uh, there was a football managing game that I used to play FC Porto as well. And then, yeah, as soon as I moved to Hereford, then I started playing Hereford. I do dabble in sometimes in the big teams as well, so I'll go and play FC Porto again every now and then, or Barcelona is, is one of my favourites as well to play in FM. Um, so I've done that. And a couple of times I have basically started and employed and see what happens. Um, so I've done that a few times as well. I remember there was one year that I paid Benfica, which is kind of strange because Benfica is like the arch rival of Porto FC. But actually, I really enjoy that save because it was, it was, um, they have great resources. At least at the time, they had great resources. I'm not sure what they're like now. Uh, as far as youth youth team, um, so I was able to just bring up a lot of youth players into the squad and. Um, yeah, build up the cash, and, and every now and then I'll get a really nice player from abroad or something brought in. That was it was great. Really enjoyed that. It was almost too easy because you just keep winning all the time. But um, yeah, right. So substitutions. What are we gonna do here? I could put. Uh, I think lemon is probably the best option. Oh, he's not. He's not. I don't really have an... Uh, I guess I could do... Um, ba -ba -ba. Hang on. To think about this one. Need to do some thinking. Alright, I'm going to put Ro there. And I'm going to get Dan Davis to play on the right. And we'll see how that goes. So, for this season, we're going to find... It's quite difficult, I think. We've just been promoted. Uh, and we don't have a striker. I mean, we do. Obviously, we have Jason. But Jason isn't at the same level as the other players that we have. So, so we're going to find it quite difficult, I think. And, yeah. But I think we can still stay... Uh, I think we have enough resources to be able to avoid the relegation. But we'll see. We'll just have to come back and see how it goes. And then one of the other th things that I do once I finish uh, getting in all the players, I go through their individual training plans. And I think I mentioned this in previous episodes. I look for the lowest attributes in their... Um, key roles for the for the for the, key, the key attributes for the role that they play and I try to develop that attribute so I do that and uh, I'll have to go through the mentoring as well make sure all the mentoring groups are set uh, adjust all the staff responsibilities once all the staff oh, it essentially is the director of football that I need and then I'll go through all of the um, staff responsibilities and make any adjustments as necessary and then it's basically just sit in and play the league, really. Um, yeah. After all of that setting up for the, the league is done, then j basically just play until January, February. You know, obviously January I tend to do some um, re-evaluating of the squad, bringing in any players that I can to improve it. Um, obviously have to do a little bit more of admin there with individual training and so on as required. But yeah, basically just sit in and wait for... Let's just play through the season. Alright, so we are... Rock bottom of the league at the moment with our loss against Torquay. With the most conceded goals. But it's okay, we will... Go and... Play the rest of the season and I think we're gonna be alright. Now I'm gonna leave it there because this has quite been quite a long episode already. Thanks so much for watching until the end and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.